I'm really disappointed, obviously, that we lost the game again. Um, but we are not capitalizing for everything that we are doing in the game against probably the best informed team in Europe. The way we played, the amount of situations, chances that we generated, not winning the game again, not even losing, not winning. It is it's very frustrating, but uh, when my team plays with that attitude, with that desire, with, with that um, emotion, I need to stick behind them. There is no other thing that put your head up. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why we're here today is because we have to talk about Mikel Arteta, Arsenal Football Club, and we just lost um, yesterday to Liverpool in the FA Cup. We've been knocked out of the FA Cup, another trophy, se uh, another season where we cannot win any of the two domestic trophies, and it is looking peak for the other two trophies. So we need to sign a striker, and this video here, Mikel Arteta is asked about the striker situation, and he responds. I'm showing you two videos that Mikel Arteta has spoken in. This is one of them. And before we go any further, make sure you do hit that like on the video, hit that subscribe on this video, and let's continue with this video. Face the situation and, and try to improve. The thing that we have to do is to put the ball in the back of the net. Since Christmas, 61 shots, 16 on target, and just one goal. It's like none at home. How much is that a concern for you? We know that's a massive concern. I'm just going to skip that part quickly, and let's get to the main point. Oh, what's going on? Oh, man. Listen, as I'm having some technical difficulties, I'm going to go to the next video where he's asked directly about the striker situation. And Mikel Arteta's quote from this statement is quite damning. Let's get it, let's get it going. A lot of supporters around the press box were shouting, sign a striker. If you can't hear what the media personality has just said, he's asked Mikel Arteta. A lot of Arsenal fans are asking to sign a striker. And this was Mikel Arteta's response. Are they right? Sorry? Are they right to call for an oh. outlet goal score? The supporters. The supporters. What I beg the supporters that they are behind the team. A lot of supporters. He basically deflected the question and did not answer it directly, stating that he just wants the team to, to get support from the fans. And I understand that. I fully understand asking for support from the fans, especially at this time when we've lost so many games consecutively. But we need to know what's going to happen in this January window. We need to know, are we going to get the adequate cover that we need? Are we going to get the positions that we need covered? Because at this moment in time, Arsenal is not scoring goals and we need a striker. Let's go to the next. Let's go to the next video. This gives us more clarity, hopefully, on what he thinks is going to happen this January transfer window. Finances because of financial fair play. How realistic is it that you could go in and bring back a natural goal scorer? And the moment it doesn't look realistic, you know. He literally just said, "It doesn't look realistic that we can go buy a striker." That's peak. Let's let's continue. Let's see let's and see what, what he has to say. My job is and what we have to do is improve our plays and and try to to get with the players that we have better results. And um, I think that generates that match normally ends up in a really good way this season. So sometimes things happen for a reason that today we cannot understand them. You talked about the telescope. So in case you missed it, he was asked directly verbatim, "What do you think we're going to do in the January window?" Due to financial fair play and everything else, do you think we can sign a striker? And this was his answer. A top class striker. You are having to be careful with your finances because of financial fair play. How realistic is it that you could go in and bring back a natural goal scorer? And the moment it doesn't look realistic, you know, and what my job is and what we have to do is... It doesn't look realistic, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't look realistic that we're going to get a striker. It doesn't look realistic that Arsenal are going to sign a striker in January. And... For the January targets that we did have, just so you guys know, Ivan Tony is now off that list. Unfortunately, it seems Ivan Tony will be staying. Yes, he will be staying at uh, Brentford. He seems like he he feels like he owes Brentford um, to get them out of the relegation part in the second half of the season, and he will show the club. Uh, the clubs that supported him throughout his eight-month ban, he will be staying with them. That was reported earlier today by That Is Football. So we have seen that Ivan Tony is back training with uh, Brentford. 
and he has already scored a hat trick in the under 21s match with Brentford. So it looks like he will be staying. And he actually had a Sky Sports interview where where he spoke Ivan Tony about this a uh, whole ordeal. Let's hear what he had to say. Like I said, just let's watch watch the space and we'll see what happens. Obviously, everybody's gonna have their opinions. Everybody's that's that's life. <laughs> everybody's opinions isn't factual. So just let them. Like, there's been plenty of occasions people have been saying this about me. Then I do what I'm capable of. Then they eat their words. So. He vows to make people eat their words uh, in his most recent interview. He said, watch the space. He's confident that he'll make he'll prove the doubters wrong. And I don't doubt Ivan Tony for a second. I think Ivan Tony is going to help keep Brentford up this season. And it's going to be unfortunate that he will not be leaving in January to join Arsenal. But he will most likely be staying at Brentford after scoring a hat trick in in in, in a behind closed door friendly. I do expect Ivan Tony to be a big part of Brentford season and to help them stay up and to keep them afloat for this upcoming year. That with that being said, that's not it for today. Although Arsenal don't look like they will be signing a striker, there is still a lot of rumors of Arsenal selling a striker. Yes, there was heavy 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 reports of Arsenal potentially selling a striker due to the fact that Gabriel Jesus has gotten injured. Yes, Gabriel Jesus has gotten injured, guys. Uh, this was reported January 7th, uh, yesterday before the Liverpool game, that, J that Gabriel Jesus has picked up a knock. And with that being said, Arsenal were looking at Arsenal were looking at a striker situation. Although Crystal Palace are extremely interested in Eddie Nketia, Arsenal have made it clear they don't have plans on sell selling Eddie Nketia. If we did sell Eddie Nketia, that would then free up some funds and space in the team for us to go and sign a striker. But it doesn't look like we're going to do that as Crystal Palace don't value Eddie and Ketia the same level as which Arsenal currently do. Eddie, uh, although Crystal Palace are long-term admirers of Eddie and Ketia, it does look like that is not going to go any further than just inquiries at this moment in time. Arsenal want around 30 million, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like Crystal Palace want to pay less than that. So we're going to have to wait and see how things escalate there. Um, talking about Dusan Vlahovic, it doesn't look like Dusan Vlahovic will be leaving. The Juventus director said uh, Vlahovic is not for sale. So that's Ivan Tony out the way, uh, not happening. Dusan Vlahovic, not happening. So that's two signings that we could have made in January that is not happening. Uh, David Onsin himself, when questioned on a QA, and a uh, was asked uh, if there will be any suggestion of heavy investment in any positions. He said, more plausible in the summer. Uh, so there's no suggestion that there'll be heavy investment in January. So that is just giving you guys more information on that. But we are heavily linked to an Amadou Onana. So let me just go to that right now. Amadou Onana seems to be the main, uh, the main story right now. He seems to be the main conversation. And and one of the lead journalists in uh, Belgium football, Sasha, has come out and said that talks have intensified currently ongoing between Everton and Arsenal for Amadou Onana, the Belgian midfielder, was who was always put in his priorities to stay in the Premier League, is keen for the move and thinks... Uh, uh, things could quickly develop. Now, I'm just going to say this to you guys. Arsenal fans are really down about the potential signing of a midfielder when we need a striker. But I would say we need both. Plus, we could potentially do for another defensive signing also. So I am not against signing Amadou Onana. I think he's a quality midfielder and he could somewhat replace Thomas Partey in the team as Thomas Partey has been injured for a quite a while. And we do need a younger player, another physical player who also has the ability to get around the pitch and to contribute in the final third as he do has done for Everton. I think Amadou Onana would be a great signing for Arsenal. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section and discuss with me what you guys think about Amadou Onana. Now, reports coming out, Sasha has reported that Arsenal are intended to push for the signing of Onana and Arsenal are considering making an offer to Everton, as reported. Um, the offer could be around 51 million at this moment in time. Everton does not want to jackpot. It's aiming for at least uh, 50 million. Of course, they don't want to get... This is what Everton are aiming for, not what Arsenal are looking to pay, of course. Um, my... Uh, Mehmed, of course, reported a couple of days ago that Arsenal have contacted Everton and exploring an uh, opportunity to bring Onana to uh, the Emirates. There's also reports that 
if we were to cash in on Smith Rowe and Eddie and Ketia by by June thirtieth, Arsenal could uh what Arsenal spend their allowance on transfer fee and wages could risk breach uh, breaking FFP rules according to John Cross. This is interesting because I haven't heard of Arsenal being. I've heard we are on the bubble of FFP, but capacity i don't know let me let's unless arsenal cash in on smith row or anketia by the 30th of june then there is no room to sign a striker or even a midfielder and that will have to wait until the summer like a few big clubs arsenal have spent their allowance on transfer fees and wages and cannot risk breaking ffp rules with another big deal yeah so you can forget about uh uh, you can forget about a major signing like like that. If if it means we have to sell Smith Rowe, Eddie and Ketia, I don't see us getting adequate funds to uh, for Smith Rowe and Eddie and Ketia to sell them in January, even if we admit us bringing in somebody like that. Arsenal are showing interest in Spinozola, who's a left back, of course. He he will end his experience uh, uh, in June. He will be a free agent. Interesting. Could we sign a free agent? Spinazzola, if you guys don't remember, was a big part of Italy's team that won the Euros um, and anything else. Obviously, they're talking about 50 million for Onana. Would, do you guys think that's too much money? Let me know. Uh, Lewis, Amaz Lewis Scully, before I joined Arsenal, I knew Ethan because we were uh, at Chelsea together. We're kind of gone up the ranks together. I don't know what the relevance in that story is, but hey. Uh, we're going to talk about Onana's agent is actually in London. If you can see in this in in this in this photo here, this is what he wrote on his story on his Instagram story. And some great news, ladies and gentlemen, to wrap up this video, we have news that both Thomas Partey and Timber have joined Arsenal squad in Dubai for training. Doesn't mean that they're ready to go. Doesn't mean that they're going to start playing football in eight days in in a couple of weeks' time, but it just means that they're physically fit enough to be on the training pitch, and they're starting to get themselves going, and they're going to travel with the team to Dubai. Uh, it it is to boost the morale of the squad and everything else. Hopefully, this can get us back up and uh, up and going in the Premier League as we have dropped points two consecutive uh, two consecutive games in the Premier League, and this is a third game, of course, in the in the uh, FA Cup, and it's unfortunate that we're out of the FA Cup, but these things do happen. And finally, let's go to what is the final thing that we need to discuss, Reese Nelson. The reason why we need to discuss Reese Nelson, Reese Nelson has vowed to fight for his place at Arsenal. Arsenal is my club, and since I was eight years old, of course I want to play as much as I am right now, but Reese Nelson vowing that he wants to fight for his place at Arsenal Football Club, that should give us, uh, that should just, that should show you his his dedication, and I think Mikel Arteta needs to do a better job in giving guys like uh, like him a, a better opportunity to continue to push for his place at Arsenal. Because I don't think he's given a lot of these youngsters an opportunity to push for their place at Arsenal, and hopefully he can do that. Hopefully he can do that, right? But yeah, that's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I know we've been knocked out of the FA Cup. This January transfer window has been very slow. I'll continue to pump out videos for you guys as much as possible to give you guys all the information that you need. Make sure you do hit that like button. Make sure you do hit that subscribe button. And let me know what you guys think Arsenal are going to do. Um, do you believe we're going to actually sign anybody? Would you like Amadou Onana at Arsenal? Um, Mikel Arteta has spoken about the striker situation and it's looking peak. Ivan Tony is not happening. Uh, Dusan Vlahovic is not happening. Would you sell Eddie and Ketty or Emil Smith Rowe? And finally... Get excited because at least it looks like we're going to be getting Timber and Thomas Partey back before the end of the before before the end of the the season. Hopefully, it looks like Partey could be back late February and March is what Timber is aiming for. But yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. And yeah, peace out, people. Love for watching and.